Long with the Welcome and be part of this gathering with our extraordinary friends who are on this walk from Indian Point to Vermont Yankee. And with special, special loving greetings to Reverend Kato and Junsan Yasuda. Some of us have walked with them maybe de decades now, I might say. And I was saying to Reverend Cato that it's 40 years ago that we had, after Three Mile Island, we had an extraordinary gathering, thousands of people, to shut down Indian Point. 40 years ago. We haven't succeeded yet. But if ever there was a hope at the terrible, terrible cost to the people of Japan and the people of the world, we may be able to shut down not only Indian Point, but many other plants, and many that would have been funded and put online will not be. So that is that is our hope, that's the prayer, and if we need to be here again and again and again, we will. If you want to say celebrating, memorializing Chernobyl. Peace within, peace in the world. Now, I, w I would like to appreciate the fact that people have come from many different places. And Harvey Wasserman, some of you who are in the city heard him yesterday. You've heard him on other occasions. He's one of our most extraordinary <coughs> experts on the question of nuclear power and certainly Indian Point. He keeps on top of it, gets hundreds of emails every day to keep, keep him abreast. So nobody can be more helpful for us to understand what's, what's happening and what is in our future, which we hope is going to be a very positive one in that respect. I want to give you Harvey Wasserman. And after Harvey speaks, we're so happy to have David Burns with us, who is going to be singing, playing, uh, including a brand new song, about Fukushima and and before that a song that Harvey and Pete Seeger and David wrote called Solitopia and many of you know that is the hope of the future the hope that we must see become a reality Solitopia a world powered by the sun so here is Harvey thank you Connie you are magnificent my wonderful Connie Hogarth, it's just an honor to be here with so many of you great organizers and walkers. Kato-san, how long have we known each other? Uh, many, many lifetimes. So uh, I want to speak uh, today, how long should I talk? How long can you stay awake? <laughs> Do I have four or five hours to speak? No, I'll, I'll just speak about five or ten minutes. Uh, I don't need to convince anyone here about the dangers of nuclear power, obviously. So I want to talk about what Fukushima has done uh, and where we can go from here, because this is a, a time at terrible cost where we uh, can see a major change in the uh, future of nuclear power and our ability to shut these plants down and to prevent new ones from being built. Uh, we've had a succession of four very serious accidents. Uh, in 1966, there was a major uh, near explosion at the Fermi nuclear plant in Michigan. Uh, and I actually was at the University of Michigan 40 miles away at the time, and I never heard about this accident uh, uh, until seven years later. But uh, not much radiation escaped there, I was uh, thankfully. 
Then we had Three Mile Island. Now, Three Mile Island did change things in this country. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, we hear the lie that no one was killed at Three Mile Island. I went into the central Pennsylvania area a year after the accident, and I interviewed people. I stayed there for a week. It was the worst week of my life. Cancer, leukemia, birth defects, stillbirths, malformations, a, a hair loss, open sores, a bad taste. Uh, it was a terrible experience. And t uh, 2,400 people were uh, affected to the extent that they sued uh, in federal court at the federal government. They never got a fair trial. And so when you hear the commentators say, I think we'll have to wait now. When you hear the commentators say that no one was harmed at Three Mile Island, it's a terrible lie. Just refer them to me, but say without any question, if you are confronted, that we know people were killed at Three Mile Island. There's simply no doubt about it. Then we had Chernobyl. Chernobyl, uh, uh, we have had finally a definitive study that came out within the last year done by three Russian scientists who showed very clearly that uh, at least 985,000 people have died as a result of Chernobyl. And this was, uh, within, this was a few years ago that they came to this conclusion, so the number has risen. And uh, at least half a trillion dollars damage was done by Chernobyl in an area that was very remote with not many people around it, thankfully. But there is, of course, a dead zone around Chernobyl. And uh, Chernobyl did th change things. And I want to mention, because we'll come back to this, that the only way people learned about Chernobyl was that radiation came down in Sweden. And when nuclear workers went to the react one of the reactors in Sweden, they, their clothing was very radioactive, and they, they tried to figure out if they were having a meltdown, and they, they weren't. And so they figured, they, they, they traced it back, and the only way the world found out about this horrific accident was uh, from a plant, nuclear plant a thousand, a thousand miles away. Now we've had Fukushima. Now Fukushima uh, is in a country, of course, that's very advanced. Uh, j the Japanese own General Electric and Westinghouse. One of the, re one of the arguments I continually confront is with, in debating nuclear power is people say, well, Chernobyl was done by the Soviets, it was old technology, it's not relevant to the United States. Now that's false. But what we've happened here, had here in Fukushima is a nuclear plant, you know, 10 of them uh, are run, uh, run by uh, uh, the Japanese who are actually better at running nuclear plants than the United States is. And uh, as I say, they own General Electric and Westinghouse. And the Fukushima design is right here. And it, a, a, a roughly two dozen reactors in the United States. So there's nothing remote about Fukush Fukushima, not even the location. And there's no excuse for this. So we have, as I say, two dozen reactors, actually 31, that are very, very similar to the Fukushima design in the United States. And that we must argue against their continued operation. So uh, where, where do we stand now? Well, Fukushima has definitely changed the equation. Radiation has come here from Fukushima. It arrived within four or five days. It was measurable in California. Uh, and I have a daughter in Los Angeles, so I'm very sensitive to this. And the, uh, what, so now what the talking heads uh, on, the, on the TV shows are saying is, well, not enough radiation has come here. It's, it's inconsequential. That's utterly false, and I think everybody should know that. I'm sure you do, but this is stick by your guns with this, because I've been doing this uh, just for a little perspective. I, I actually coined the phrase no nukes when I was 27 years old. I now have my Medicare card, so you can do the math. Uh, but, and the bottom line is that we have known for decades that there is no such thing as a safe dose of radiation. How do we know this? Well, there are a number of different ways, but the bottom line is this. The embryo in the uterus is infinitely sensitive to the tiniest dose of radiation. If anybody tells you that radiation is safe, you ask them, why don't we x-ray pregnant women? The reason we don't x-ray pregnant women, there was a 30-year debate. There was a study done that definitively linked x-rays to childhood leukemia. And the reason we don't x-ray pregnant women is because there never has been and never will be a dose of radiation that is acceptable to an embryo or to a fetus or to a tiny baby or to the elderly who may be increasingly sensitive or to anyone who have, may, may have certain biological sensitivities. So the bottom line is this. <clears throat> if it's detectable, it's dangerous. 
If it's showing up anywhere on any radiation monitor, it is dangerous to human health. And we have had that in the United States. I just told my 11-year-old my who was going shopping with a family that she's not to buy milk because milk iodine has showed up in, in milk in the United States from Washington to Florida and from California to Maine. It's everywhere. This is a small planet now with radiation. And so we, we, we know these dangers are here. They're with us. If someone tells you radiation is safe, ask them what kind of radiation. Is it X-ray? Is it gamma ray? Is it alpha emitters? Is it beta emitters? What are we talking about here? You, radiation is not some uniform black box, and neither is our biological sensitivity. So Fukushima has now changed the equation. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Uh, by the way, this, this or bright green thing I'm wearing here, uh, before Fukushima, it was navy blue. <laughs> so, sorry about that. <laughs> Couldn't resist. So, um, uh, politically, uh, we, we, uh, the, the equation has changed. Uh, the Germans now, who were, had voted to shut their nuclear plants, have now and then backslid under uh, 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 Prime Minister Markel, have now lost a key election, and seven or eight reactors will shut in Germany very quickly, and the other nine or ten will shut uh, by 2020. Uh, this isn't fast enough, but it's good. It means that they've reversed course. Israel, which was talking about building a nuclear plant, uh, uh, has said they will now not build a nuclear plant. Uh, Switzerland, which was thinking of building more, and Italy uh, have both stopped. And so our challenge here is in the United States. Now let me talk very quickly about some legislation. The uh, Obama administration, which has been abominable on this, on, on this issue, uh, absolutely terrible. Let me, let me say first, uh, three or four days after Fukushima happened, President Obama got on television and said, well, don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt us here. And by the way, we're proceeding with nuclear power. Uh, let's deal with the first issue. What the federal government should have done and should be doing and should have been doing for the past 50 years, there should be, there must be a national radiation monitoring network in place so that you can go on the internet and in, li in, in real time see how much radiation is coming down and where it's coming down. This is a primary responsibility of the federal government. We have tremendous hearsay. You know, radiation here, radiation there, it's not systematic, it's all rumored. People ask me what, I, what can they do to protect themselves from radiation after all these years, I don't know. It's a very difficult question. You may be able to take potassium iodide but there are people, some people should not take potassium iodide for various biological reasons, and you should only take it at certain times, and it may not work for everyone. And these issues are complex. But at the very least, the federal government should have a real-time national radiation monitoring system to provide the information on X-ray, gamma, uh, alpha, and beta emitters. And we should, have, we should be able to know where, with reasonable certainty what kind of food it's turned up in, because it has turned up in milk. And it's certainly, uh, there's cesium that's been de de detected now in Vermont. We don't know if it's from Vermont Yankee or from Fukushima or from both. This is knowledge that all the American citizens should have. And this is the, the responsibility of the federal government. If we can be, how many wars are we in now to protect ourselves? Three, four, who's next? I mean, if they can do that, but they can't protect us from radiation, something's clearly wrong. Every, there should be a national supply of potassium iodide. You should be able to go into any drugstore anywhere and have, get potassium iodide to protect yourself because in certain circumstances it is relevant. And there should also be a, a, a definitive medical handbook available to the public provided by the government as to what you can actually do to protect yourself from radiation. Now there are things that can be done, that need to be done, and that this is the responsibility of our government to, to provide this. Instead we have Barack Obama saying, don't worry, watch television, and uh, we're proceeding with nuclear power. That's the last we've heard of him about on, on Fukushima. It's a tremendous der dereliction of duty. Absolutely unconscionable. So, now, I'll, and I'll try to do this quickly, um, uh, we, we face a number of legislative challenges. Um, uh, th there is a $36 billion loan guarantee package in front of the U.S. Congress for the 2012 budget, not the one they just fought over. But the next budget, there are $36 billion in there for f loan guarantees to build new nuclear plants. We want that out. Now, people ask me all the time, whatever happened to the anti-nuclear movement? The answer is very simple. We won. There were supposed to be a 1,000 nuclear plants in the United States by the year 2000. When we first started, Kato and I and Akani and so many of you others, in 1974, Richard Nixon got on national TV and said there'd be a 1,000. There were 104. 
by the year 2000. So that's too many, but we still stopped almost 900 reactors from being built. And believe me, they would have been built if there had not been an anti-nuclear movement to protect, prevent the industry from going into Congress and getting fully funded. You know, the supporters of nuclear power like to look at France, and they say, oh, they get 80% of their electricity from this wonderful industry. That industry is totally government-owned, totally government-subsidized, totally government-monitored and, re and regulated. What a brilliant combination. And so, uh, you know, all these, I love all these capitalists, these free market advocates who say we love the French nuclear industry. It's national socialism. And that's what we would have had here had it not been for the no nukes movement. So, but like in all those monster movies, you know, we killed the monster and then it, it, and everybody celebrates, but then it comes back to life just for an extra 10 minutes in the movie. So that's where we are now. Now, where we are now is that this $36 billion is meant to fund more nuclear plants. And this is Obama's administration who's pushing this. Bush pushed $50 billion in 2007, and we got our, a movement together, and we stopped them. We stopped $50 billion in loan guarantees in 2007. It was a tremendous movement, and, and we succeeded once again. So here's Obama back with 36. There's 18.5 that came from Bush, so that would bring it up to 54. We need to stop those $36 billion from the federal budget. So what, and what, what I ask everybody, wherever I go, is to call the senators, Gillibrand, I forgot her name yesterday, and, uh, and uh, uh, now I'm forgetting Schumer, okay, <laughs> and, and call them not once, not twice, Twice, but every day, every day, take your five minutes, call Schumer, call Gillibrand, call the Congress people, tell them, get that $36 billion out of the 2012 budget. Yes. And call your Tea Party, local Tea Party, because they're supposed to be against that stuff. I talked to a Tea Party group in Ohio. They didn't want it. And so, you know, let's come at them from left and right. But that $36 billion has to go. And if we kill that $36 billion, we will have defeated them because they will not have money to build new nuclear plants. I am convinced that if we stop that $36 billion, the nuclear industry is over in this country. And they, they won't build more. Now, uh, to kill these, to stop these guys, these old ones, these are, this is really difficult. Uh, it's a huge challenge to shut them down. But let me ask you a quick question. How many of you are driving a car that's 40 years old? 30. Anybody got a 30 year old car? Do I hear 20? I have a 20 year old car. It's one of those old Volvos. So, you know, you know those guys. So, uh, but this thing is how old? How old is Indian Point? 38. 38 years old. So, you know, uh, uh, we have issues of embrittlement. We think, by the way, and this is important, that um, one of the reasons that the uh, one of the reactor pressure vessels at Fukushima cracked may be because of embrittlement. Embrittlement is a critical issue. They cannot deal with embrittlement in these older reactors. The re embrittlement is the reason that Yankee Row was shut. Because, uh, as we know, when, when metal is subjected to heat, extreme heat and radiation, over a long period of time, it loses its resilience. And it becomes, it becomes brittle. And the, uh, uh, this has been known since re reactors were brought online. And the problem with embrittlement in an older reactor is that if you do have an accident and you flood the core to stop the radiation, uh, stop the, uh, the, the, the chain reaction as they had to do at Fukushima, the metal might crack and might even disintegrate. And that may be what happened at Unit 2 at, F at Fukushima, or Unit 3, or maybe even Unit 1 as well, is that these embrittled reactor cores, which are so old, have cracked because of the embrittlement. And so this is an embrittled reactor here. Absolutely no doubt about it. The other issue, of course, with the older reactors is that they have tons and tons of radioactive waste and uh, with nowhere to go and nothing to do. Uh, and also relevant to Chernobyl, you know, the, the, the media like to say that there was no containment at Chernobyl. That's false. There was a containment at Chernobyl, and it was stronger than this one. The, the General Electric Mark I reactors, uh, their, their containments were weaker than the, the non-containment at Chernobyl. It's a, it's a definite. So, um, we also, by the way, uh, and, and this is a little far away from here, but not so far, really. We have four reactors in the United States that are in tsunami zones. Now, I was in Japan in the 1970s, and uh, the idea that a, um, a, a, an earthquake could cause a tsunami and hit a nuclear plant is very well known. It was widely discussed in Japan. It's not like this is something that people uh, didn't know would happen. We knew this would happen. The only question was when. Every one of the 55 reactors in Japan is on an earthquake fault, or very near to one. And in fact, five, less than five years ago, an earthquake hit the Kashiwazaki plant, which had seven reactors. And two or three of those re reactors have not reopened. 
and they were forced shut by an earthquake. Thank God there was not a tsunami as well. We have four reactors in the United States to whom this very thing could happen. Two at Diablo Canyon in, uh, near San Luis Obispo, California, and two at San Onofre in between Los Angeles and San Diego. The two at the, uh, there are actually three at San Onofre. One is shut, like here at India Point. We have one shut and two operating. San Onofre has one shut and two operating. They are literally on edge. It's not a hundred yards from the San Onofre reactor to the high tide line. And so any tsunami uh, coming on the West Coast would zip, zoop right into that thing. You know, they have a wall there. That would last about 20 seconds. And then the, the, the Diablo Canyon one, uh, like San Onofre, is very clear within a mile of a major earthquake fault. And so, uh, by the way, if you ever go to Diablo Canyon, I highly recommend the San Luis Obispo County Jail. I spent three lovely nights there. Food was good, nice company. Uh, take a lot of friends with you, though. It's a lot better that way. So um, uh, we we now ha we do have a chance. Vermont Yankee and, and Indian Point are the two reactors uh, where we have the best shot, I think, at shutting down new nuclear plants. And that's what the, this march is so beautifully choreographed to do. And people do understand, finally, uh, some of these dangers. Uh, 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 but do not hesitate to tell people that this radiation coming down from Fukushima is deadly and that we need a national monitoring system. Now, finally, I'm sorry I've gone over my time. Uh, only half of you are asleep, so I'll, I'll speed it up. Um, we do have answers to this. And the answers which David is going to sing about is Solartopia. It's a vision of a green-powered Earth. Something very exciting and important has happened in the last 30 or 40 years that we've been fighting these reactors. When we first started, we said, well, if we would take the money from the nuclear plants and just take that money and put it into solar and wind, someday we would have solar and wind and we would have a sufficient technology to not need nuclear power. At the same time, by the way, we were saying someday we might have a, an African-American president. Everybody laughed. Okay, so, uh, but, uh, but, and, and what's happened in the last 30 to 40 years is that this, the money, some of the money that we prevented from going into nuclear power did go in to alternative energy, to renewable. And that what's happened now is new, renewable energy is no longer alternative energy. This is alternative energy. Renewable energy is the mainstream energy. Wind and solar are now very, very clearly cheaper than nuclear power. There's absolutely no doubt about it. If, you're, if you are a capitalist and you have $10 billion to invest in the future of energy, you will not invest in a nuclear power plant. You will invest in solar and wind. That's where the money is. That's where the technology has advanced. And so um, uh, I actually wrote a book called Solartopia that shows where our... Uh, what a green-powered Earth <coughs> will look like. And we are technologically, this was not true a few years ago, but we are technologically in a position now to say that if we rid the planet of all nuclear and fossil-fueled facilities, if we could magically just erase them and send them off into outer space, uh, of course, somebody there will probably send them right back, but if we got rid of them, got them off this planet, we could install a currently available wind and solar, all green technologies, and the, the lights would not blink. We have sufficient technology to do that. We can easily replace the power coming from Indian Point with wind, solar, tidal, geothermal, ocean thermal, biofuels, not from corn and soy, good biofuels. And, and we, we, the, the mix is there. It's all ready to go. We are finally in that position to say Solartopia is a real vision, a doable vision with currently available technology. That's what's changed, and that's what's so powerful. And so as we do this march... We are very, we are close. Fukushima has definitely changed the political equation. I, mean, I was invited to speak yesterday to a peace march, the most diverse march I've been in, uh, and, and people heard it, people hear it. You have to make it clear, this radiation is with us now. It came here from Chernobyl, it came here from Three Mile Island, it's coming again from Fukushima. And just to fi finish up, I want to say, I am terrified at what, what's happening at Fukushima. It's horrifying. I have five children. This is the last thing on Earth. For the first time in all my career, I actually broke down and cried on a radio show. This is this is, doesn't get any more serious. But what really terrifies me, beyond Fukushima, is what happens next. We've seen a progression of accidents here. Somebody's trying to send us a message, or so it seems. And it is possible to have a worse accident than Fukushima, and that's what we're here to prevent and to get us to Solartopia. Thank you so much for marching. Once again, thank you for being here. And here's the great multi-Grammy winning David Burns to sing us a few songs. We appreciate it. They want to wait for the train to pass. While we're doing that, I want to give my uh, shirt. Ah, I'm giving you the shirt off my back. This is for, if you'll take this on your march. Take it to Vermont Yankee. Wow. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hobby. Thank you.
So before I sing, I just want to thank those who are doing the real heavy lifting in this movement to people like Harvey and like these wonderful marchers who've come here and like Connie Hogarth. So they're the ones who are really doing the heavy lifting and singing is just, uh, like I say, a drop in that bucket. I'm going to ask Sue Alkin to come up and help me though. She can maybe hold this microphone and sing some nice harmonies and zenote. I'm the soul of Fukushima I died so you could see I gave my land, my people My harbor by the sea I gave my land, my cattle My flowers and my ferns I gave it all so everyone could learn It's just one earth just one sea, just one sky, over you and me. Just one chance, the world around. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. Shut them down, shut them down. Shut them down. I am Three Mile Island. I'm wounded and I'm sore. You can hear my voice still calling out by the Susquehanna shore. My song was just a warning to stir the deaf and dumb. I tell of all the dangers yet to come. It's just one earth, just one sea, just one sky, over you and me. Just one chance, the world around. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. I'm the ghost of Chernobyl. My song is not my own. It's a million missing singers in the great exclusion zone. Our melody is drifting across the flatlands of Ukraine. That may seem far away, but just the same. It's just one earth, just one sea, just one sky, over you and me. Just one chance, the world around, shut them down. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. I'm the soul of Fukushima, I died so you could see. I gave my land, my people, my harbor by the sea. I gave my farms, my cattle my flowers and my ferns I gave it all so everyone could learn It's just, just one earth, earth Just one sea Just one sea Just one sky Over you and me Just one chance The world around Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, we gotta shut them down, 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 shut them down. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, I'm told one more. So, uh, Harvey Wasserman. Okay. Harvey Wasserman is a co-author of this song, Solarcopia. Was there an Adam? Was there an Eve? Or did we evolve from what we conceived? Either way, we got what was needed when the sun shone down on a garden of Eden. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia? Solar topia, solar topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia all over God's green world? Well, we bit that apple. The garden was lost. We had to work to pay that cost. That's when we went digging into the ground and started to burn many things we found. But don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, solar topia, solar topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia all over God's green world? We multiplied. We needed more. The rich got rich, the poor got sore. The fuel ran scarce, the price jumped high. And so we gave nuclear power a try. But don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, solar topia, solar topia. Solar topia. Solar topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia all over God's green world. But the nuclear plants were built in haste. Too many risks, no place for waste. And so from Seabrook to Shoreham Town, we've got to shut those nuke plants down now. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, solar topia, solar topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, all over God's green world. Now we're fighting wars over oil and gas. No matter who wins, they will not last. The earth is scarred, the planet is warming. Don't you think that all of it's a great big warning? Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, solar topia, solar topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar topia, solar topia, solar topia. to power our houses and cars with the light from our magnificent star. It's a gift to share. It's always been given. It falls down to earth like rain from heaven. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar-topia, solar-topia, solar-topia. Don't you know we're gonna have a solar-topia all over God. Tani 
くしかの鳴き声誇り高い鹿たちの愛のままに森と共に流れゆく甘いの道深く俺たちの時代だから王子の時代だけど俺たちの時代